Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, we've reviewed the 12 and the 16 core monster CPUs from AMD. It's a very good showing for AM5, but these, these CPUs are a little less expensive. $300 US and $400 US, six and eight cores. Do these CPUs make sense? AMD has said this plucky little six core can go toe to toe with the 12900K in gaming. And we'll take a look at that. That's basically accurate, but there's a lot more to the story than that. Stay tuned. Six cores on an AM5 platform, look, I get it. I get it, you're doing the calculus. It's like, this is $300 for that CPU on AM5. And we've got kind of a weird situation because it's not like the AM4 stuff is not available. The AM4 stuff really is something to behold. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a platform kind of at the end of life, but you know, at the very top, we've got the 5800X 3D. Now this is an expensive processor. It's a lot more than $300. But this is the best gaming processor that you can get right now. It doesn't matter what GPU that you have. And that's an AM4 processor. It's because it's got so much cash. If you factor in the cost of the rest of the system, you've got your motherboard, you've got storage, you've got your power supply, you've got your case, and then the same over here, you probably would save a little bit of money on your power supply, a lot of money on your memory and your motherboard, and your storage is probably going to be a wash. Could you make up the price difference to the 5800X 3D from the six core? And I think that's the calculus that a lot of people are doing. A lot of people are, are looking at AM4 and they're looking at AM5 and they're looking at even lesser expensive processors than the 5800X 3D. Micro Center had the 5900X for just over $300, 329. I was like, oh, there's a 12 core AM4. Everything else being equal, I'm gonna save a few bucks on the motherboard. Certainly I would save at least $30 on the motherboard. AM4 looks like it's a more compelling platform because it's six versus 12 cores. And yet, it really comes down to the single thread performance. And we see that in the benchmarks. As we sort of look at the six core and the eight core from a gaming perspective, the six core holds its own for gaming. In fact, it's sort of weird because even with the 3090 Ti and the 6950 XT, the highest end GPUs you can get right now, you're not in a position to really bottleneck those GPUs with this plucky little six core because that single thread performance is so utterly insane. The single thread speed here is nuts and games really like single thread performance and when we have a monster cache version on AM5, okay. But you're gonna be paying a premium for memory and your motherboard and everything else. B650 motherboards are on their way though and B650 it's probably gonna be a little cheaper, but it's probably not gonna be it's dramatically cheaper. There are really amazing AM4 motherboards that are around $100. You also factor in Intel. Intel is sort of attacking the flank from the side. Intel has a lot of you know, i5-ish CPUs that are insanely cheap. We've reviewed the i5-12400, that's six P cores and no E cores. That is an incredible CPU that very often is available for just over $100, which is completely insane. It's an excellent CPU. You get the i5-12600K, uh, and yeah, you can do some stuff with that and, and get it to overclock and do some really interesting things. That's also six P cores, but you also get four efficiency cores. So. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a nice CPU as well, and it's a pretty nice CPU for games, as long as games don't trip over the whole P-Core, E-Core thing, which generally is pretty resolved, at least on Windows 11 and things like that, where we are now in 2022. So I think Intel is really, really, really attacking AMD for these lower cost processors. If you look at the total cost of the system, the 6-Core and the 8-Core, yeah, it's $100 difference for the CPUs, but the cost difference for the overall system Motherboard, memory, uh, storage, power supply, case, etc., etc., plus $100, as that's the only difference for two more cores and a little bit more clock speed, I think it's a no-brainer. I think that you would go with the 7700X at a minimum. Yeah, you can light the platform with the 7600X, but I just don't think it makes economic sense to use the 7600X at $300, considering the other platforms that you have. I mean, it is more future-proof, AM5, theoretically, than AM4, because we're at end of life with AM4. But that's a tough calculus that you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to make those decisions on your own. That said, the benchmarks are really interesting, and the game performance is really interesting, and these are really impressive CPUs. AM5, make no mistake, is a platform that's here to stay, 
and the CPUs really are incredible. And if you think it maybe you want to go beyond the 8 core, be sure to check out a review of the 12 and the 16 core. Oh, and for Linux stuff, the level 1 Linux channel. Toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, the 6 core with the 12900K on Linux, yeah, basically holds its own on Linux as well. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Thank you.